Welcome to Respiratory Disorders Part 3. This section is going to address cystic fibrosis. We abbreviate it CF, and it is the most common chronic respiratory disorder that we see in children, and it is congenital. It's an inherited autosomal recessive disorder. It's located on chromosome number 7. They can obtain a defective gene from either parent. Make sure you watch the Khan Academy video that goes through the physiology of CF and what is wrong. Ultimately what occurs because of the altered chloride channels is any area that has mucus it becomes very very thick. So it affects the lungs, the GI tract, the cervix, semen, and sinuses. In addition, these children lack pancreatic enzymes. And so early on, we're going to see failure to thrive in these children. Due to the thick mucus, they're at very high risk for infection. To diagnose this disorder, we do a sweat chloride test. In order for the test to be considered positive, it needs to be over 60. If it's between 40 and 60, it will be repeated and if it continues to be between 40 and 60, it is also considered positive. Cystic fibrosis is being diagnosed very early on in life because the test has been added to the newborn screen, which detects close to 30 disorders. If we miss the diagnosis early, we can see changes on a chest x-ray, as well as their pulmonary function studies. These children will exhibit effects of chronic illness. They're always going to be tired. They have poor weight gain. They'll have delayed puberty. Due to the thickened cervical mucus and thickened semen, they have infertility issues. Because they lack the pancreatic enzymes, they have impaired digestion and they have very fatty stools. So these stools are gonna smell pretty foul and when you look at them sit in the toilet, they're going to float on top of the water. Due to chronic hypoxia, these children will develop clubbing early in life. When we send off cultures of their sputum, it's not uncommon to grow out pseudomonas in addition to H. flu. You can pause the video here so that you can see how this is an autosomal recessive disorder and if each of the parents carry the CF gene, it will be expressed as disease in one child. And this slide reiterates what I've already discussed in the previous slides, but it gives you a nice picture. Cystic fibrosis is considered an exocrine problem. Mucus blocks the air sacs within the alveoli. Mucus blocks the pancreatic duct, and both of these cause lung congestion, increased risk of infection, and malabsorption of nutrients. So how do we manage these kids? This is a group of children who become frequent flyers to the hospital. Whenever there is a bad URI going around, you can anticipate that a cystic fibrosis child is going to be admitted at some point. So we want to promote oxygenation. We do a respiratory assessment and they have a variety of things that they do to manage their respiratory tract. This includes using percussion and postural drainage. I have some pictures that will be in subsequent slides where you can see how we do that. They can wear a vest, and I have this YouTube link on a Word doc so you can actually see how this vest is used. These kids bring their vest to the hospital, you will watch them use it. We want to try and thin the secretions as much as we can and they will use a saline solution that's nebulized. We need to keep the airways open. It's very important that they get adequate fluids and the hotter it is outside the more these kids need to drink fluids because their mucus is going to become thicker. We still want these kids to be out exercising and we want them to develop normally. Every once in a while, they might be put on steroids just to reduce the inflammatory response within the lungs. 
and when they develop pneumonia, we are going to go with what I call the heavy hitters of antibiotics. Because remember, they develop pneumonia and it's usually from pseudomonas. But they can get other strains of, of pneumococcal pneumonia, H flu pneumonia, and they can also have the influenza that is complicated by a pneumonia. So here's a picture of two kids who are using the vest. So the one on the right is actually doing her NEB along with vest therapy. So as the airways are opening up, this vest is vibrating and loosening the mucus so that she can cough it out at the end. Here's a picture of a mother who's doing percussion and postural drainage. So they literally have to cup their hand and they gently pound against the kid's ribs in the anterior, lateral, and posterior. They have to make sure that they do this before a kid eats. If we do it after the kid eats, we're going to increase the risk that they're going to aspirate or they're going to vomit. They have to turn them upside down so that gravity will help the mucus to drain. Nutrition is huge in cystic fibrosis. They need to eat a good diet and they need supplemental vitamin K. Because of the fat malabsorption, and these are fat-soluble vitamins, there is a brand of vitamins A, D, E, and K that are water-soluble, and this is the form that they need to have. Many of these kids are going to have a G-tube in, and they receive enteral feedings during the night. They're going to be taking pancreatic enzymes and other medications to promote motility and absorption. We want to prevent and treat infections. Some of these children may require central, central line placement. Cystic fibrosis is continually being researched so that we can come up with new and better approaches to the disease. And being able to detect it in a newborn is one of the greatest advances in cystic fibrosis identification in the last decade. This is a child who has suffered significantly from cystic fibrosis. He is not able to grow normally because of his increased work of breathing. Pulmacare is a nutrition replacement formula that is for cystic fibrosis kids, and they can drink this several times a day in addition to the foods that they eat. When we give the pancreatic enzymes, and they're called Creon, C-R-E-O-N. It's okay to put these in applesauce and send it down that way. They can be opened up or they can be taken within the capsule. And they need to take this right before a meal because otherwise there's no point in them eating because they're not going to absorb it. It's going to go through and they're going to end up with having diarrhea. Cystic fibrosis requires a lot of psychosocial support. Like I said, these children are in and out of the hospital they need to be kept away from children who have illnesses, but at the same time, we want to promote their normal growth and development. I have other links to some YouTube videos that gives you a good description of what it's like to live with cystic fibrosis. When these children are admitted to the hospital, you can anticipate that your interventions are going to include administration of the fat-soluble vitamins, giving IV antibiotics for pneumonia, chest physical therapy, providing low flow oxygen therapy, providing adequate fluids, as well as salt in the diet, and the, the nutrition therapist will take care of that. Administer the pancreatic enzymes that are given with the meals as well as snacks. Now remember, this is a chronic illness. They're used to taking care of it at home. There's no need for us to wake these kids up at eight o'clock when we know that as an early teen and a late teen, they're not wanting to get up until 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. So we'll administer these enzymes once they are up and ready to eat. Parent and patient education is huge. The earlier that we can get these kids to take care of their own illness, the better. So they need to learn about the vitamins and taking the enzymes. Some of these kids will need additional salt. And I'm talking, you put table salt in a teaspoon add it to some type of a food, and you send it down. I'm not talking just using the salt shaker on the food. Due to recurring infections, they can nebulize tobramycin. This medication costs over $6,000 a month. Do you have that kind of money if you were not insured? 
Some of the children will be on prophylactic antibiotics at home, chest physical therapy. They need to learn how often and which method will be used. Are they going to get the vest, which is another costly item, or do the parents need to do it manually? We teach them breathing exercises similar to COPD so that they can expand their lungs more fully. Promote activity and get these kids into support groups for cystic fibrosis patients. Immunizations is another huge item that we need to do because they cannot afford to get an illness. Once again, cystic fibrosis is a chronic disease. Once the initial shock of the diagnosis sinks in, then the parent and the child need to learn how to manage the disease. And ultimately, they will become the experts in the care. When they are admitted, they will be telling us how they do things at home. And we want to be as flexible as possible and follow their routine. Allow that teenager to sleep in. There's nothing else going on for them when they're in the hospital, so let them sleep. We'll give them their meds when they wake up, let them eat, let them have their respiratory therapy. Many of the children and teens can do their own chest physical therapy when they have their vest at the hospital. Transition from home to the hospital by decorating the room. These kids might be in the hospital for several weeks, so we make it their home away from home. And we also allow them to use a lot of their own linens. Do promote them to get in and take a shower every once in a while because sometimes they try and get away without it. So this ends the presentation on cystic fibrosis.